Dylan Bates, your friendly neighborhood Final Cut Pro, recently released an amazing new plugin called Pro Vertical, and he shared his workflow for creating vertical videos. It's unorthodox, but it's also genius because it saves time and fixes a few common issues that you might experience when editing vertical videos. If you're used to editing your 16x9 video first and then duplicating that timeline to create a vertical version of your edit, you're probably familiar with these workflow issues already. Issue number one, conforming to fit. The first issue after creating your 9x16 vertical video timeline is that you need to scale up your footage to fill the screen. And some people use the scale parameter to do that. Instead, I prefer to head over to spatial conform in the inspector and change the type from the default fit to fill. Normally, you would have to do this for every clip on the timeline, compound clips included, and sometimes it can throw the positioning off when compared to the 16x9 version. This is a step that you can totally skip if you use Dylan's workflow. Issue number two, using assets not designed for 9x16 projects. Some titles, transitions, and effects are not designed to work with vertical videos. If we look frame by frame at this camera vertical transition on a 16x9 timeline, you can see that it works perfectly. But the same transition on a 9x16 timeline has a weird black frame in the middle. Dylan also showed in his pro vertical video that some titles aren't optimized for vertical videos and when dropping certain titles on screen, they don't show up. In some cases, you have to play around with the transform properties or go into the title parameters to move the title onto the screen. But again, with Dylan's workflow, neither of these common vertical video editing issues are a problem. So what is Dylan's pro vertical workflow? Well, you can edit your vertical videos on a 16 by nine timeline and simply drop the social guides title on top of your edit. Then drag it out to fit the duration of your vertical video. You have this cool overlay allowing you to already kind of preview what your video would look like on YouTube Shorts, for example. You can also change the UI style to Instagram for Reels and Stories or for TikTok, and you can easily see if any of these on-screen elements will cover something that you don't want them to. You have a safety zone to make sure nothing is cropped out when uploading to these platforms, and you can also change the outside opacity. This allows you to clearly see what will be visible in your vertical video and what won't be. With this guide on top of my footage, there's no need to conform anything. So that's issue number one, gone. And if I go frame by frame on that camera vertical transition again, you can see that we don't have that weird black frame. I can also add a title to the video and it's easy to see that it's off to the side. I can grab it and just reposition it where I want without having to try and figure out where it is off screen. So that's issue number two, gone. But what about exporting the video? This is where the unorthodox part of this workflow becomes a genius workflow for me. You simply head over to this prepare for export option and change it from none to no UI and rotate. That will hide the overlay and fill the screen with your vertical video. You can then export the video however you normally would. I'll just do an Apple devices 4K export for this one. And when it's done, I can preview it and you'll notice it's on its side. I'll stop the preview and use the shortcut command R to rotate the clip by 90 degrees and boom, we have a 4K vertical video that maximizes the quality, but also allows you to keep using all of your transitions, titles and effects, even if they're not optimized for vertical videos. If all of that wasn't cool enough, Dylan has also added a bunch of other useful tools into the Pro Vertical plugin, which I'll link to down below. We have some other title effects, transitions and video effects that I'll quickly show you. All of these have been specifically created for vertical timelines, so they're not optimized for 16 by nine timelines. There are some really cool backgrounds. I like this paper texture one. There are some animated shapes. I like the fact that you can change the brush type to chalk to make it feel more hand-drawn. There is this cool highlight reveal title. You can add any text to it that you like and then add keyframes to animate the text on screen. You can also add multiple keyframes if you want to time the animation to your voice. We also have quick pan and quick zoom movements, which are super useful to zoom in and move around your footage. In the effects tab, you can add an outer glow to layers that have transparency. You can also add an outline effect. All of these effects are also customizable, of course. There is also a pop-up animation, which I love using on logos. I'll just hit option G to create a compound clip before applying this effect to the logo. And then we have this nice dynamic motion on our logo. There are two split screen options, double and triple. Both of them allow you to animate in and out to choose the position, so you can layer clips up, add the effect to them, and then change their positions to quickly get a split screen effect in your vertical videos. Lastly, there are a whole range of transitions designed specifically for vertical videos, so if you're editing on a vertical timeline, you have some really great options to choose from. 
If you edit a lot of vertical videos, this unorthodox workflow is going to save you time and allow you to use all of your 16x9 transitions, effects and titles. And if you thought this plugin was cool, then you definitely need to check out Dylan's ProZooms plugin next.